What is the scarlet-colored beast of Revelation chapter 17? The Bible's Answer The scarlet-colored beast, described in Revelation chapter 17, is a symbol of the organization whose purpose is to unite and represent the nations of the world. It first existed as the League of Nations and is now the United Nations. Keys to Identifying the Scarlet-Colored Beast 1. A Political Entity The Scarlet-Colored Beast has seven heads that are said to represent seven mountains and seven kings or ruling powers. Revelation 17, 9 and 10 Mountains and beasts are used in the Bible as symbols of governments. 2. A likeness of the worldwide political system the scarlet-colored beast resembles the seven-headed beast of Revelation chapter 13, which represents the worldwide political system. Both beasts have seven heads, ten horns, and blasphemous names. These similarities are too striking to be a coincidence. The scarlet-colored beast is an image or likeness of the worldwide political system. 3. Power from Other Rulerships the scarlet-colored beast springs from, or owes its existence to, other ruling forces. 4. Linked with religion Babylon the Great, the world's collective body of false religions, sits on the scarlet-colored beast, showing that the beast is influenced by religious groups. 5. Dishonors God The beast is full of blasphemous names. Revelation 17.3 6. Temporarily inactive. The scarlet-colored beast would be in the abyss, or inactive, for a time, but would rise again. The footnote reads, According to Vine's Expository Dictionary of Old and New Testament Words, the Greek word translated abyss describes an immeasurable depth. The King James Version renders the word as bottomless pit. In the Bible, it refers to a place or condition of confinement and complete inactivity. End of footnote. Bible Prophecy Fulfilled Consider how the United Nations and its predecessor, the League of Nations, have fulfilled the Bible's prophecy of the scarlet-colored beast. 1. A Political Entity the United Nations supports the political system by upholding the sovereign equality of all its members. The footnote reads, See Article 2 of the Charter of the United Nations. End of footnote. 2. A likeness of the worldwide political system. In 2011, the United Nations added its 193rd member state. Thus, it claims to represent the vast majority of nations and peoples in the world. 3. Power from Other Rulerships The United Nations owes its existence to its member nations and has only as much power and authority as they grant to it. 4. Linked with Religion both the League of Nations and the United Nations have consistently received the backing of the world's religions. The footnote reads, For example, a council representing dozens of Protestant denominations in America declared in 1918 that the League would be the political expression of the Kingdom of God on Earth. In 1965, representatives of Buddhism, Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, and Protestantism assembled in San Francisco to support and pray for the United Nations. And in 1979, Pope John Paul II expressed his hope that the UN will ever remain the supreme forum of peace and justice. End of footnote. 5. Dishonors God the United Nations was established to maintain international peace and security. The footnote reads, See Article 1 of the Charter of the United Nations. End of footnote. While this goal might seem to be praiseworthy, the UN actually dishonors God by claiming to do what he has said only his kingdom will accomplish. 6. Temporarily Inactive the League of Nations, which was formed shortly after World War I to maintain peace, 
was unable to prevent international aggression. It ceased to function when World War II began in 1939. In 1945, after World War II ended, the United Nations was formed. Its purposes, methods, and structure closely resemble those of the League of Nations. As we have all learned, being Jehovah's Witnesses, the United Nations is the tool of the devil, according to the Watchtower Society teachings. It's the devil's tool to end Jehovah's Witnesses on this earth, to turn on all false religion, and then finally on God's so-called people, the Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, in the news of Russia and the ban of Jehovah's Witnesses, there are experts from the United Nations, and this is called United Nations Human Rights Office of the High Commissioner, with an interesting article, and it says, UN rights experts urge Russia to drop Jehovah's Witness lawsuit which threatens religious freedom. Isn't that interesting? Moves by the Russian government to ban the activities of Jehovah's Witnesses using a lawsuit brought under anti-extremism legislation have been condemned as extremely worrying by three United Nations human rights experts. This lawsuit is a threat not only to Jehovah's Witnesses, but to individual freedom in general in the Russian Federation, the experts said. The use of counter-extremism legislation in this way to confine freedom of opinion, including religious belief, expression, and association to that which is state-approved is unlawful and dangerous and signals a dark future for all religious freedom in Russia, they stressed. The condemnation follows a lawsuit lodged at the country's Supreme Court on 15 March to declare the Jehovah's Witnesses Administrative Center extremist to liquidate it and to ban its activity. A suspension order came into effect on that date, preventing the Administrative Center and all its local religious centers from using state and municipal news media and from organizing and conducting assemblies, rallies, and other public events. A full court hearing is scheduled for 5th April, which has passed, and if the Supreme Court rules in favor of the authorities, it will be the first such ruling by a court declaring a registered centralized religious organization to be extremist. Concerns about the counter-extremism legislation have previously been raised in a communication by the three experts to the Russian authorities on 28th July 2016. The suspension order imposed on 15 March is the latest in a series of judicial cases and orders, including a warning sent to the organization last year referring to the admissibility of extremist activity. This has already led to the dissolution of several local Jehovah's Witness organizations, raids against their premises and literature being confiscated. We urge the authorities to drop the lawsuit in compliance with their obligations under international human rights law and to revise the counter-extremism legislation and its implementation to avoid fundamental human rights abuses, the UN experts concluded. <coughs> so the footnote here says this, the special rapporteurs are part of what is known as the Special Procedures of the Human Rights Council. Special Procedures, the largest body of independent experts in the UN human rights system, is the general name of the Council's independent fact-finding and monitoring mechanisms that address either specific country situations or thematic issues in all parts of the world. Special Procedures experts work on a voluntary basis they are not United Nations staff and do not receive a salary for their work. They are independent from any government or organization and serve in their individual capacity. <laughs>